Hi guys, so some of you may have noticed the title of this series and possibly think that I've gone completely off my rocker. So let me tell you what the 12 months of Christmas is all about. Every year in our household, we make gift baskets, which we give to family, friends and neighbors at Christmas. And I think there's something truly wonderful about receiving homemade gifts. By their very nature, they show somebody that they're worth your time and effort. So I'm going to share with you some of my makes and recipes, which by the end of the year will assemble into some of the most wonderful gift baskets and also some goodies for you and your family too. We are going to be exploring many different crafts over the coming months from mead making to beading and of course some needle felting. You could choose to have a go at some of the items or you can have a go at them all. It's entirely up to you. Some of the makes will require extra equipment and everything will be listed out on the website. But this is a great way to get a jump on things and it takes a lot of the stress out of what is a very busy time of year. Recipe sheets and downloads can be found on the Mums Makery website. That's mumsmakery.co.uk. And please do just take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel as we will be bringing you a new episode each month. So sit back, and let's take a delicious and crafty journey together over the next 12 months. Welcome to uh, this month's episode of the 12 months of Christmas. And this is one that I love this one. This is something that we make every year. And as I said, we've been out harvesting today or foraging today. And these are the fruits of our labors. I've picked some slows, and these are the slows over here. And I also picked some hawberries, which is from the hawthorn tree. And I'm not going to be showing you anything to do with the hawthorns. Um, I'm going to be making a hawberry sauce or a hawberry ketchup, but that's quite a long winded process and requires a cooker and all kinds of things. And I was like, nope. <laughs> Because what could possibly go wrong if I try to do that live? <laughs> so if you are somebody who likes to go out and forage or you're thinking of going out and foraging for the first time, something like sloes and hawberries are they're, they're quite good. Also, things like blackberries. Blackberries are abundant at the moment. And if you go back to the 12 months of Christmas episode that we did back in July, that was jam making. And if you follow that recipe and substitute the strawberry for blackberries, you can make yourself some lovely blackberry jam. But this, if you haven't guessed, is all about gin. Now, very at the very start of the year, I made mead. And mead is one of my absolute favourite things to make. Slow gin is another thing that I absolutely love to make. But they take time. You can have slow gin ready in about 10 weeks, but ideally you want to be leaving the berries in your gin for six to eight months. That's um, what I have found is the best amount of time for me. However, if you have never made slow gin before, now is the time to go out and grab yourself some berries. There are plenty of identification um, tutorials and stuff on YouTube and other social media so make sure you can identify them. Slows are also uh, you may find something that looks like a slow but is bigger and that's called a bullus and to be fair you can use them just the same. I have done a mixture of a slow and bullus gin and it comes out absolutely beautifully. So what I'm going to do is show you two things that you can do with gin. This is one that, as I said, you can make now, but then you're going to want to really leave it. I make my slow gin now for next year. This is last year's batch, and that will be going into smaller bottles and will be going in my Christmas gift baskets. So go out, have a forage, pick yourself some slows. And um, as I said, we're going to we're going to do a slow gin recipe. But the first thing I'm going to do is share my Christmas gin recipe with you. Now, this is something that you can make and consume in about 
a week to two weeks. It's it's very, very quick to make. And there's a few ingredients that you're going to need for it. Um, the first one is Bramley apples, and I foraged them from the tree in my back garden. Um, and the other thing which you, you may or may not have heard of, these are green gauges. And I'll just pop you on the overhead camera. So green gauges are a plum and they've got a stone in the center a large stone and the way that i that i prepare these is you cut you cut it in half twist it de-stone it and then have the halves so it's in two quarters what i then do is i chop the bramley apples into about sort of one inch cubes keep your fruit nice and uh, large we're not going to be trying to puree it we're going to be removing it from the gin later on so you don't need to cut it very very small so those are green gauges and i foraged those from tesco's <laughs> my local grocer hasn't had any in yet so i had to go on a bit of a a bit of a hunt for them but they are at tesco's you can google them um and I will just quit actually I will just quickly show you. So here's my green gauge. Let's take that stalk off and put your knife in and just run it. You can feel when your blade hits the stone in the middle and just run it all the way round. And then it should just twist open like that. And you can see there's a really big stone in there. Now the way that I deal with the stone is with one of these very old fashioned potato peelers because it's got a cora in the end. And I just get my cora underneath that seed and scoop it out. And you can see it's quite a sizable seed. And then chop these in half like that. And that's really all there is to it for preparing um, those green gauges. You potentially could use other plums. Um, I've never used other plums. I've always used green gauges. But, you know, this is the sort of recipe where you can really just play around with it. If you don't have green gauges, if you don't like green gauges, don't use them. You can just do Bramley apples. You could put blackberries in there. Um, there's there's really no kind of set rule to doing this. What I'm going to do is you're going to need 500 grams of chopped Bramley apples, 500 grams of green gauges. That's stoned. That's after they've been stoned and uh, chopped up. You're going to need two cinnamon sticks, one stem ginger, a little stem ginger syrup, and then you're going to want 30 grams of sugar per 200 grams of fruit. So we're using effectively a kilo of fruit. So I'm going to be using 150 grams of sugar. You can use granulated or you can use castor in either of these recipes. I'm going to use castor in my Christmas gin recipe simply because it's finer. So it will dissolve a little quicker. So what I'm going to use is this is a Kilner jar um, or one of these sort of flip top lid clasp down type jars. And this one will hold two litres there or thereabouts. You can get one that's slightly bigger because there's an awful lot of fruit going in here. And both of these recipes are so unbelievably simple. It is just throw it all in. So. Let me get a little bit organized. Now, these ha these jars I have sterilized and I have sterilized them by submerging them completely uh, into boiling water and leaving them there for several minutes. Uh, I then take them out, allow them to air dry because you don't want uh, a hot jar um, because otherwise when you put your fr fruit in, it will start to cook. So I'm gonna take half of my apples and half of my green gauges. I think you probably may want to go with a much bigger receptacle. This was the only one I had free. <laughs> and let's just put that on there. Let's put 
some of those in. So I'm going to put in half of my sugar. And this is a jam, um, a jam funnel. So it's, um, it's got a nice wide mouth on it. You've probably seen me use it in some of my other videos. It just saves it all going everywhere. <laughs> so in with my stem ginger. And I've just chopped it up uh, into half a dozen pieces. So I'll put three in there. And I'll put one cinnamon stick. So that's all in, sort of in my jar there. Let me get rid of that. What I tend to do, I'm going to put this to one side. I'll make one jar, but I'll make the other one after. And apologies if you can hear the fan going. I don't know if, um, I know we've got some international people watching. Hello. <laughs> um, in England at the moment, the weather is crazy. <laughs> it is absolutely crazy. And um, it just, and today it was drizzly. So everything just was so humid. The, the temperatures here have been absolutely crazy. So I've got half of my ingredients in here. And here are, here is the stem ginger. This one I just got at Sainsbury's, uh, but it's stem, stem ginger uh, in a sugar syrup. And because I do like a little bit extra of the ginger syrup in uh, my Christmas gin, I actually have this extra. So I've put in half of my my ingredients into this jar and the other half will go in another jar and I'm just gonna now this is to taste I probably put maybe about 20 ml of uh, ginger syrup in there so this is one of those recipes where you make it the first time and then you adjust it now if you feel that there isn't enough sugar in here when you taste it you can always add more sugar later on and what we call back sweeten it so don't worry about that. So I have my apples, my green gauges, my cinnamon stick, half of the sugar and half of the stem ginger all in here. And then all you're going to do is grab your gin of choice. Now this, this is a London dry gin. Um, Gordon's, I completely forgot the name of it then. Um, it's one of my favorites for this it's a very nice clean tasting gin and it really does take on uh, flavors I found very well all you do is fill her up Now, this is a one litre bottle um, and all one litres in there. I've still got a little bit of room in the top. So what I might do is grab my other cinnamon stick. I wasn't sure that it was all going to fit. So I've got to go back over here now and get everything else back. You could use a, a slightly, a slightly bigger um, jar. I think I possibly did the first time I made this. Oh, no. You see? <laughs> see? I learn from my mistakes. have a tendency to, to cascade sugar everywhere. So I'm going to get in all of my sugar. And then I'm going to add in, go back and add in some more fruit. Until this is right near the top there you can you can see this is this is right at the top and then just seal it up you you do make sure that your jars have got a really good seal on them 
um, you don't want to be shaking this up and then finding that your, um, your jar sprung a leak, which has happened to me. Turn it upside down and just give it a little bit, little bit of a jiggle. Don't, don't try and do a, a Tom Cruise cocktail job. It's just, it doesn't need it. Just give it a little bit of a jiggle. Because all we're doing is we're just moving that sugar around. And there you go. That is Christmas gin. Now, put it in a cool, dark place for one to two weeks. And you'll go every couple of days and just turn it upside down. Give it a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a jiggle. And those sugars will dissolve. And then after a couple of weeks, pop the lid, have a little taste, see if it's, you know, getting there. Put the lid back on and, you know, just leave it a little while. You ca This can be ready in about a week. Um, I do find that I like a slight, I like the, the flavours to infuse a little more. So um, I tend to leave mine a month, maybe two. But this is a very, very good, quick way of making a little homemade something. And you're not brewing, you're not fermenting, you haven't have, got to have a lot of equipment. You can do this with jars. And if you've got smaller jars, then just divide up the ingredients equally, divide up the gin equally. Um, I like to use a liter of gin. So I will be leaving this now probably until uh, the end of October, um, which is when it will probably be ready for me. But once you've got your recipe and, you, you know, for example, if you want to add a little more sugar or you want a little less sugar, play with your recipe, write down your ingredients. And as I said, within a couple of weeks, you can have a homemade uh, sort of gin, a custom gin, which you can then put in your baskets to give away to family and friends at Christmas. My only suggestion is make two because you will probably want one yourself. The other gin that I have to share with you this evening is slow gin, and it's a classic. Slow gin is, oh, just, I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. And I like to put slow gin in my mulled wine at Christmas. It is, it really just takes mulled wine to this whole different place. There will be a 12 months of Christmas info sheet to go along with this episode. If you're not familiar with the 12 months of Christmas, then do hop over to our website from the link, click or from the main menu, click Makery TV. And there you can see the episodes for the 12 months of Christmas dating right back to the start of this year. When you pick your slow berries, obviously you're going to want to give them a wash. And then what you're going to want to do is pull off as many of the stems as you can. You're not necessarily going to get them off of everyone. Don't worry about it. You've then got two options. The first option that you have, which is the one that I use, is you weigh out 450 grams ish. You pop them into a Ziploc bag and you throw them into the freezer. Now, traditionally, Slows would be picked after the first frosts. However, <laughs> we're pretty much heading towards the end of the slow season. It's the start of September. There's not a frost in sight. Um, so what that does is by throwing them in the freezer, it kind of, um, to be honest, I don't know what the technical term is for what it does to the fruit, but it makes them better uh, for sort of imparting their flavours into the gin. If you don't want to do that, and what I used to do uh, is get your kids. <laughs> I really hope they're not watching. Because um, it will be, you made us do what? And you could have put them in the freezer. <laughs> is you get a cocktail stick and you just prick the skins a couple of times and that also helps them release their flavor. So two options, pop them in the freezer for a couple of days. Um, I mean, 
they, they will stay in the freezer for months. You don't have to use them straight away. And if, like me, you want to break up the times that your gin is ready, then I usually make a quite a bit of slow gin at this time of year. And then I just put one, one bag of 150, uh, sorry, 450 grams of slows into my freezer, you know, just in case. You know, just in case you need you need it. These are the ones that I picked today, and there's enough there to make three batches of the gin. So that's Christmas next year sorted. So I've got my 450 grams of slows, and I'm going to be using 350 grams of sugar. And with this one, I'm just using a normal bog standard granulated sugar and that's it that's all there is in this one you need 450 grams of slows and 350 grams of your sugar i have another sterilized jar i've lost my jam funnel <laughs> cleared it away <laughs> so like with our Christmas gin, we're just going to pot, and these are going to go everywhere, I can feel it. I'm going to put these very carefully, unless I start a, a wave of slow berries. <laughs> They're such a gorgeous colour as well. And when I have got these in the pot, I will grab. These were frozen. You can see there's some ice still left on them. But be brave. There we go. So these are lovely, the colours of them. And when, when it's all complete and it's all done, you just get this beautiful, let me move this out of the way because it's focusing on that. When your gin is done, you get this beautiful colour and there's nothing quite like slow gin. Um, it has a very unique taste. So that's the slow berries in, in the pot, 450 grams of slows and 350 grams of sugar. Now again, when this is, when all the sugar is dissolved, it will still be quite young. I like to leave this for about six months minimum. That's just me. With your first batch, you're going to want to try it, you know, take a little taste each month. Just remember that you don't want, this is all sterilized, so you don't want to be introducing things into here. So when you open it uh, for your little taster, um, use something like, and again, sterilize it. You can sterilize it in um, brewers, sterilization powder, Milton's, anything like that. Uh, generally, when I'm doing samples, I use a turkey baster. And you can just take yourself off a little sample, pop it in a glass and have a little taste. So that's the sugar and the berries in. And we now add in our gin. And this will probably not fill up this jar. We'll end up with a little bit of space at the top. You can, if you want, add in more berries. You may have a smaller jar. So just, um, you know, just work with what you've got. Divide things up. But again, all of your jars must have a really, really good seal and must be, I always sterilize it. And then we're just going to shake it up. It's like one of those, um, what were those things we had in the 70s? That had all those 
Pete. <laughs> what were those? Lava lamps. <laughs> so there, it's obviously it's quite a lot of sugar at the moment. And again, give it a little bit of a shake. Always have your hand over the top, no matter what you're doing. Even if you trust the jar implicitly, just a word from the experienced who <laughs> picked it up and went, shake. <laughs> so always keep your hands over the top, no matter what. Um, and again, cool, dark place every couple of days you know to start with maybe for the first week you just want to give it a bit of a topsy-turvy up and down um sort of a couple of times every you know uh, every day and then you're going to move on to maybe shaking it up a couple of times a week and then once a month twice a month just you know you you want to get those sugars dissolved once they dissolve and it will slowly turn this beautiful, beautiful red colour over time as well. So there we have it. There's our Christmas gin and our slow gin. So this can be ready in, as I said, a couple of weeks. I like to leave mine to mature a little bit longer than that. So I will probably leave mine stewing in here for, as I said, a couple of months. Um, once you have made it, I generally find that it is best consumed within about eight months. Um, I, I've never had any last longer than that. <laughs> but uh, Bramley's, you can get all year round pretty much. Um, green gauges, not so much. They, they do tend to be um, a bit more seasonally available. But as I said, you can tinker with that recipe. You could do an apple and blackberry gin. You could do a damson and apple gin. There's no limit to what you can do. Obviously, once these are ready, so in about eight months, have a taste or I will be tasting this and it will probably be there or thereabouts. I may need to add some more sugar. You can always add more. And if you add more, then write your recipe and make a note that you added another 50 grams of sugar for example when this is ready and again this is personal taste you're just going to put it through a fine sieve that will take out most of the sort of sediment type and little kind of like mushy bits from the the fruit because as you shake that up and down you're going to be agitating it and it's going to sort of disintegrate a little bit and the same with this when you're shaking it up and down that is that agitation that's going to help those sugars to dissolve so you sieve all of the fruit out of it, pop it into sterilized, new sterilized jars, let it sit there. And then I recently got these. These are 500 ml jars, uh, 500 ml bottles. And I'm going to use these for my gifting this year. I've got a range of different sort of size bottles from 250 ml, 350 ml and 500 ml. And then of course I've got big big sort of standard wine size bottles as well when you're planning your gift baskets because it's this time of year that I'm really planning out who's who's getting what in what gift basket and sort of making those sort of final tweaks to the stuff that I've already made it's at this sort of time of year that I'm really looking at my packaging and stuff and the 12 months of Christmas video for last month, which was August, was all about packing and wrapping and some things that you can have in your stash ready for not just Christmas, but all year round, those last minute sort of little gifts. So do check out the 12 months of Christmas uh, series. It is over on our website, all of the links and stuff. I hope that you have enjoyed the gin recipes. They are staples of mine, and I know Pixie B, when she sees this video, is going to be very happy that I've made more of the Christmas gin because that's pretty much where most of my last batch went. <laughs> that is it, I believe, from me for this evening. I will just double check that I have used up all of my buttons. <laughs> Please, if you would, 
uh, just pop a little like onto this video. It does help the uh, the YouTube algorithm know that we are doing fun and interesting things. And hopefully then we get put in front of more people who also may be interested in seeing all the things that Mum ma uh, Mum's Makery has to offer. So please do just give us a little like on the video. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe because we've got new stuff coming out all the time. That's my two Christmas gin and slow gin recipes for you guys. I would love to hear what you make. And if you've got a recipe that you might like to share that you think uh, I might like to add to my repertoire for my baskets, please do send me an email. I always love hearing about what you guys are making. So that's it from me for this evening. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for choosing to spend your time with me today. So that just leaves me to say I wish you all a very crafty day.